An interesting fact of living in hell was that each demon was unique on their own. Even if they belonged to a wider race, such as spider demons, many needing special accommodations, often referred to as heavenly punishments. For instance, the monstrosities of sin were demons who solely inhabited the layer of gluttony. They required between 5,000 and 10,000 calories daily just to prevent them from going berserk. Of course, some demons had even more requirements to function on the daily. In your case, unlife was relatively great. Thanks to some great luck, you managed to get a position at the king's court. You were a mate, working under Lucifer's right-hand man, the butler Priminger. Of course, this wasn't because Prim did a not suitable enough job. The Hellborn kept everything in perfect order all by himself. It was simply because he was one of a butler. The Hellborn kept everything in perfect order all by himself. Simply because he was one hell of a butler. But it was more as a favor. After all, you were a member of the Hasbin Hotel. And as part of your rehabilitation, you had been sent to Lucifer to work, even though all the work that you had was prancing around the King of Hell in a relatively tight dress and give him things he ordered you to get. While Prim used his powers, as well as his incredibly keen eye, to keep the rest of the castle clean. Of course, the overpowered imp saw you as a welcome sight, but Lucifer saw you as an annoyance. He still called for Prim whenever he had a problem, and when the imp just pushed you into the room with him, with the words, Sir, I'm currently busy, let's lady my last out of this, the angel could feel his heart rate increase. You knew, Prim knew, and Lucifer knew that, of course, the butler could handle anything in your stead, but, well, this was your job. The one thing Prim let you do, as according to him, your kind should be around demons powerful enough to deal with your outbursts. Which was ridiculous. After all, he knew your triggers, and he was definitely more powerful than you. You were a frenzy. Powerful, though unassuming demons whose entire gimmick it seemed it was to turn into violent monstrosities. Your kind could transform, similar to overlords. While obviously not as strong, it was still stronger than most. Hellborn or not. During these transformations, frenzies lost the ability to discern friend or foe. Everything just turned into meat to devour, to hopefully satiate the endless hunger produced by the chained. Usually, you were just an unassuming girl. You weren't tall. In fact, you were smaller than Lucifer, just barely reaching his nose. It was one of the things he enjoyed about you. You had raven black hair that had a severe case of bedhead and therefore required 30 minutes of brushing every morning just to tame it a tiny bit. You were thin, with just a few curves, giving you a barely feminine shape. You had dull teeth, minus four, long and razor-sharp canines, similar to the vampiric blood demons. They glowed in a beautiful white, just like your eyes. You wore your tamed hair in bushy pigtails, hanging down your right and left shoulder blade. And you had just the most enchanting of smiles. It wasn't often a frenzy was employed by anyone. Most of your kind were feared as anything could be a trigger. Thankfully it remained one trigger and only one trigger per person. 
By fulfilling the frenzy's desires, or simply giving them enough time to themselves, could this transformation be stopped? Though, depending on the trigger, this could occasionally be permanent. For instance, frenzies in the last layer were known to permanently be stuck as ravaging monsters due to the overstimulation the layer gave them. You were standing behind Lucifer with a pleased smile as he was working on one of his duck toys. He had the dangerous idea of putting a jetpack on one of them. He already caused multiple fires around the castle, and Prim had ordered you to stay at Lucifer's side with a fire extinguisher. As the ruler of hell, while being amazingly powerful, sadly was a scaredy cat when it came to sudden instant infernos. Like an absolute dork. You heard the noise of ripping rubber, clicking of mechanisms, and the evil chuckles from your glorious hellish leader. The noise of gas swooshing made your eyebrows perk up. I can see that, Melissa, he growled. He had a little mirror, probably glanced at you at just the wrong moment. His comment made your lips twitch up into an almost smug smile, but you managed to stay professional. Don't disrespect me, young lady, he said with a glorious tone as he held up his very cyberpunk-looking ducky. For I have created the first jetpack duck in the universe. You stared at it skeptically. As he began to turn a tiny crank on the jetpack of the duck. And he kept cranking. And cranking. Uh, sire, are you supposed to eat? raised his other hand, finally letting go with bated breaths. You stared both at his hand. And then, with a loud swoosh, shot the dark off of him. It flew circles around the ceiling lamp. It... it actually worked! Quickly you clapped your hands, impressed, causing Lucifer's ego to inflate beyond imagination. <laughs> oh, thanks, Prim. But then, the duck's beak accidentally touched the lamp, causing it to fly, of course, and then for the window behind Lucifer. Dub found it. The King of Hell stared at the hole in the glass, while you immediately went to swipe up the glass shards. Thanks, Prim. He muttered his appointment without thinking. Melissa... He blinked, finally looking down at you. It's Melissa, sire. Um, right. Right. Confused, he watched you do your job. He could have sworn... Um, you know, uh... Your clapping sounds like Prim's. Oh, does it, sire? You looked up at Lucifer while you were picking up the big glass pieces. And your eyes met. His mouth was a little open. Melissa, was it, right? Um, well, uh, thanks for cleaning up after me. The awkward silence continued. It took the man a few moments of thinking... More than likely, you talked to Charlie about his behavior towards you, so he probably should be nice to you. He inhaled, finally, to say something, causing you to meet his gaze. And after a moment of consideration, he put up a fake smile. <laughs> well then, uh, Melissa, uh, do you want anything? You blinked. S Sire? He scratched the back of his head. Like, want anything. He made a hand motion, still you didn't get it. Do you have something you wish for or need something? I'm trying to be nice to you. I'm trying to give you something. Oh. You blinked. 
Well, well, I, 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 I'm wishlessly happy. You tilted your head. It's hell, sweetie. You're not supposed to be. Come on. There's always something. You snorted, causing you to look at the shards in your hands. Well, it is kind of silly. You should probably not bother, sire. Ah, oh, go on, tell me. He was coming off a little strong, wasn't he? I... Pine, you stuttered. Do you perhaps know my trigger? He shook his head. So far, he didn't care. It's healthy food. Since I arrived in hell, I have only eaten heavily processed fast food and drank nothing but sodas. He raised an eyebrow. Stuff that's fresh and healthy causes my transformation. I mean, it's kind of funny. Uh, at first you completely love indulging on garbage because it's comforting and tasty, but after three years of living in hell, I'd really like to eat some boiled rice with veggies, but knowing this will cause me to turn and kill anything, anyone inside, that's a really good deterrent. You paused, and then admitted. Before I joined the Hasbun Hotel, I was a professional writer. Overlords and gang bosses would hire me to go to rival territories and just transform shortly after exterminations, when chaos was still reeking. All I needed to do was eat two baby carrots, after all. The money was good, but I hated it. Wait, all you want is to eat something healthy? You blushed. Maybe. Lucifer went into thought. Go back to the hotel, Melissa. What? Uh, am I fired? The King of Hell furrowed his brows. Uh, no. Why the hell would... You're just free for today. Just, just go. Uncomfortably, you shifted. Okay, then. I'll see you tomorrow. You left the workshop with a bad feeling in your gut. Meanwhile, Lucifer snapped his fingers, causing Preminger to instantly appear. Yes, sir, uh, I apologize for my late arrival. God, did I ever tell you look hot in that getup? Mused Angel Dust as you entered the lobby. Practically all the time. He was sitting at Husk's bar, drinking beer straight from the bottle, and was admiring your maid outfit. When you stop working for the apple-flavored pin, can I borrow it? Val always orders the cheap knockoffs, and it'd be nice to wear some cotton for once. You blushed. Wouldn't it be a little too small for you? I, I mean, I barely fit in it. <laughs> Melly, sweetie. That's the point. Uh, you're early, gruffed Husk, interjecting on the conversation. The barman's eyes were narrowed. Uh, yeah. You started as you stepped towards them, sitting down next to Angel. He said I'm not fired, he just said I can go for today. Did you do a bad job? Angel suddenly placed an arm around your shoulder. He reeked of his bubblegum shampoo. He probably himself just came home from work. Hey, 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 we all know Melly does a great job. I, I did, I think. He just said I can go for today. Mm. Husk narrowed his eyes and then shrugged. I honestly don't know why I even care. Everyone's slowly getting affected by Charlie's positivity. Even the gruff cat demon. Nah, I bet the two just finished screwing. Angel! You gasped. What? Wait, you aren't? Then why the hell are you wearing that? 
Yeah, that I'd like to know too, actually, mused Husk. It was two days later. You had been at work in the upper chamber sorting through Lucifer's laundry when the King of Hell entered with an elegant swing of his cane. Melissa! He shouted. You squeaked, hitting your head against the door of his dresser. Ow! Oh. I have a surprise for you! <laughs> Not only was he completely ignoring your pain, but he was also uncharacteristically excited. What? What's going on? You're rubbing your head, but as you leaned up, he quickly bound a blindfold around your eyes. You shook. What? Come, let me show you. Where was this coming from? Did you do something wrong? No, no, he was excited. You definitely didn't do anything wrong, but... For the past days, he had been acting so weirdly. Not even Prim had been there to talk to you. He had just left sticky notes with stuff for you to do on them, and once you finished, you could go. Well, it was nice coming home early, not doing much. It felt great. But right now, you really felt out of place, even more than you usually did. After all, Priminger was doing everything by himself better than you ever could. Since he was one hell of a butler. Lucifer placed his hands on your tiny shoulders, pushing you through the castle. The blindfold wasn't all too thick. You could barely make out your surroundings, and such you didn't fall. Even after he pressed you towards the stairs of the castle's manor. Sire, please shush, Melissa. Don't ruin this for yourself. It's a special little occasion! With a pout, you allowed him to guide you down the stairs into the dungeons. Um, sire, uh, please, this isn't anything kinky, right? He stopped for a moment. N no? The silence that followed was strange. Now that you said it out loud, the suggestion was in both of your heads. And... Both of you now reflected deeply onto your time together. Was Lucifer really only doing this just in case you told Charlie that he was a bad boss? And you, well, you were a sinner. Screwing your boss wasn't something frowned upon. It was something expected. Hell, Angel did practically daily, and the conversation and the conversation with Husk and Spider was still occasionally drifting into your mind. After the awkwardness subsided, he continued guiding you forward. The moist smell of the dungeons was almost gross. Almost. But you had sorted thousands of wine bottles over the course of a single week down here. You were used to it. Eventually, you were pushed into what seemed to be a white modern room for the blindfold. A certain smell reached your nostrils. With a swift motion, Lucifer undid the cloth around your face to reveal... a rather sterile-looking white-painted metal panic room. And it sent us to the big dinner table, on it a silver tray, a silver dome covering whatever food it was. Sire, you could tell where this was going. I just thought I'd give you what you desired most. He sat you down on a metal chair that was a little uncomfortable. He then pointed at a glass window, through which you could not see. We are going to lock you in here, and when you turn back, we let you out. Simple as that. Sire, you, you don't have to. This was so embarrassing. Above you was a metal grate through which fresh air was pumped. The room itself had a cozy 20 degrees Celsius and smelled pleasant, of fruity detergent, with just a hint of the meal beneath the silver dome. It's fine, Melissa. It's fine. Just enjoy yourself for once, all right? Do it for me. That's an order. <laughs> Lucifer stepped outside and you heard the door close and lock. 
He seemed really determined to, whether you wanted to or not, make you eat whatever was under there. Meanwhile, Lucifer went into the observation room. Sir, I have to ask, is this really necessary? Asked Prim finally. Uh, you are the one who spent two days building this, and now you ask that? Well, sire, as a bachelor, I am not to question your actions. Though, this is mere personal curiosity. That is why I built it first, before asking. I, well, she seemed like she needed this. That is quite all right, even though that is unlike you, sire. Brimander blinked before looking at the watch from his breast pocket. Oh, it is time to clear out your study, sire. I apologize for leaving you behind, though I'm confident you can deal with this yourself. There was a look of mild amusement on the imp's face. Clearly he was thinking something that wasn't there, but before Lucifer could retort, the imp was gone. Sighing, Lucifer sat down on a stool in the observation room. By now you had lifted the metal dome of your tray and gasped. It was a Japanese-style curry, specifically a chicken one. Not like the microwave crab you usually ate, it was freshly cooked. Heck, the carrots actually looked like carrots. They were professionally cut by hand to be the same size, but very lightly you could see the imperfections of handmade work. The smell, though, was overwhelming your senses. Your shaking hand hovered over neatly sorted silverware. With bated breaths, Lucifer sat there excited. Prim occasionally made food for you. Of course, he knew your limitations. As such, he just chose to use regular microwave dinners for you to eat, just giving them some extra spices and occasionally an extra helping of dessert. Making sure to always put some extra cream or butter in the mix to make it extra unhealthy. As such, the moment the small spoon you had been given dug into the poofy white rice and yellow brownish sauce and you placed it on your tongue, you could tell. This had been made by Prim. But at the same time you initially wanted to eat slowly, you knew that at any second your body would mutate. As such, you wanted to get as much of the taste on your tongue as possibly before. It happened the moment you finished chewing some carrots with the perfectly cooked chicken. That's when your mind slipped. Lucifer watched you drop the spoon, it clanking loudly through the room. He stood up, curious watching as your body painfully convulsed. You screamed as your canines grew longer, sharper, like the clapping jaws of a saber-toothed tiger. Your body grew, and the Lucifer's lament, taller than him, at around seven feet. Your enlarged hands pressed against the ceiling of the panic room, Elongated fingers with razor-sharp nails scratching against the metal, producing hundreds of tiny flickers. Your dress tore to shreds, unable to hold the volume of your new form. Lucifer blushed, as that tiny gestalt, barely taller than Prim, became a tall, voluptuous demon woman. Your claws began to tear at your mouth, as your teeth continued to enlarge your lips no longer able to contain your jaw. Your blood splattered across the walls as you ripped it open. Multiple eyes opened up through self-inflicted wounds on your arms, wrists and stomach. 
as your skin was unable to contain your body anymore. You completely trashed the room, splinters from the table and bent, broken, crushed silverware mixing with your gore, cloth from your clothing and a large curry meal, all of which you proceeded to devour with reckless abandon. Lucifer wasn't sure whether to be aroused by your appearance, minus your self-disfigured face and body of course, or horrified by your actions. You were writhing, screaming, cackling, and a large tentacle-like tongue lapped out of your mouth, licking over any residue. You had eaten everything in the panic room. Your clothes, the table, the chair, the meal, the tray and silverware, and now you are desperately gnawing at your own arm just to get more scraps of food into your gut. Your long tongue slipping over your body. This was kind of hot, Lucifer had to admit. He tapped his fingers on the desk in the observation room, other hand over his mouth. He wasn't fought. An animal-like scream came from you. And then he reluctantly sighed. Okay. Arousal it is. He finally admitted. To himself. Leaving behind his cane and hat, he walked out the observation room, inhaled deeply, and then opened the heavy metal door. Hearing the noise of it opening, your head shot towards him. Your face twisted into a violent grin. Your torn apart face, all you were capable of was staring. Your hand slammed down on his head, immediately pulling him inside with zero regard for his health, well-being or pain threshold. The man was buried under your giant body as your teeth dug into his shoulders. He inhaled through his nose. Lucifer was used to pain. After all, he had fought angels in the past. As such, nothing you did to him actually affected the fallen seraphim. No matter where you bit down, tore, or pulled. If anything, he was enjoying your enthusiasm. Since he didn't consider this a combat, he focused on staying awake and regenerating his limbs. Until one very tense moment, where he managed to press his mouth onto your barely remanifested lips. A kiss, as violent as it was beautiful. Adding this little bit of sensuality to the gruesome scene was enough for the monster you had become to change its approach. Lutely it cooed like a cat mid-mating season, causing Lucifer to grin. Your head returned to his shoulders, but rather than biting, you slid your tongue across his many wounds, lapping up his blood in an attempt to clean his body and to taste him more sensually. Well, 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 he mused, his hands reaching up to grope at your now supple, squishy, soft flesh. Looks like I might have tamed this beast after all. As if to retaliate, you headbutted him. Ouch! As he cringed from the pain, your tongue quickly pushed into his open mouth. It wasn't a nice kiss, but it was a hot one. He could feel it going down his throat like a still alive snake, almost make him gag, but hey, that was part of the fun of it, wasn't it? It was 12 hours later. The two of you are lying in a puddle of yellow angel and black demon blood. You are curled up, sleeping soundly in your regular form. <sighs> so cute, so small. 
He couldn't believe that you had just been a monster minutes ago. Meanwhile, he was gasping for air. So, Lucifer's eyes rolled to the right. <sighs> Prim! Hi! The imp was holding a glass of water with some quickly dissolving tablet inside of it. Last time I've seen Sire Cell Tucker's out and happy was when Miss Lilith was still with you, Sire. <sighs> Prim, please, no jokes about my ex-wife. I wasn't joking, Sire. If I were, I'd take this opportunity. This was the joke, Sire. And if I were you, I'd take this opportunity for growth. Opportunity for growth? Wheezed Lucifer. As if on cue you hummed in your sleep, rolling on your back, placing a hand on your forehead as you were slowly getting back to your senses. Just make sure she wakes up without a fright, sire. <laughs> I hope the two of you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you for watching my video up until the very end. But before I say goodbye, I would like to thank all of my lovely darling butlers and stewards. Melothia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Angel, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, The Tribute, AJ Anime Girl. Thank you for your support. And one last thing, I would like to thank all of my other lovely mates for being lovely supporters. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.